From the introduction of hydraulic braking systems until around the 1960s, most cars had a single braking system. When you stepped on the pedal inside the master cylinder, a single piston would be pushed, pressure would develop in front of the piston, and would come out the end of the master cylinder. That would be divided up into four lines, they would go to the four wheels, and that's how the car stopped. The system worked quite well. However, if you lost solution anywhere, brake fluid anywhere, you'd lose the whole system. The solution to the problem came in the 1960s with the introduction of a dual braking system. They used a piston at the beginning and then a second piston in front. When you stepped on the pedal you had pressure develop in front of the first piston and the second and what that did was that allowed pressure to come out in two different places. Fluid would go to one end of the car for stopping and independently to the other. So if you lost one part of your braking system you could still stop the car. This had all kinds of safety advantages however it was a bit of a challenge to bleed. As you already know from our identifying a dual brake system video, the master cylinder in a dual brake system has two pistons. As you can see, they're really not linked very well together. There's just a spring and a retainer pin, and these basically stop them from separating from one another. The real action is hydraulic. When you apply pressure to the end of this piston with your foot, hydraulic pressure accumulates here. It moves this piston forward with the same pressure, which means that coming out of both parts of the master cylinder, we have a nice balance of pressure. The problem is this. If you've got a brand new master cylinder or you've rebuilt your master cylinder, you're going to have air trapped in here. You're going to have air trapped in here. When you go to do your bleed and you do your compression here, you're going to compress the air, it will decompress. Compress, decompress. Because the air is absorbing the energy, this piston isn't going to move very much. You won't get a bleed in front of this and it becomes unsuccessful. The secret or the way to get it done correctly is to bench bleed the master cylinder before you bleed your system. We'll cover how to do that in our next video. As you remember from our last video, it's going to be very difficult to get the air that's trapped in front of the forward piston to get out of the master cylinder. What that means is that if you take this master cylinder, bolt it up in your car, connect up your lines the way you're used to doing, and then bleeding as you're used to doing, it simply is not going to work. What you need to do is bench bleed this master cylinder before you put it in the car. To do that, you want to go down to the local auto parts store and get yourself a bench bleeding kit. They're very inexpensive. Put one of the adapters from the bench bleeding kit into the first line, put the other adapter in the second line, run the hoses that are going to come with the kit into the master cylinder, put fluid in the master cylinder. Now we're ready. You're going to take and give a long stroke with your push rod to move the forward piston and let her come back and move and let her come back. You're going to notice bubbles beginning to show up in here. That's great. Watch, and when the bubbles have stopped coming out of both sides, this master cylinder is bled. You can then disconnect your lines, put it in your car, and bleed as you normally would, and you'll be all set.